bits and pieces at this venue. And uh, gentlemen alongside the ICC match referee, of course, is Javagal Srinath, the uh, former Indian pace bowler, and the two skippers as well, Kane Williamson of New Zealand, of course, Pakistan, Safraz Ahmed, who has the coin and is ready to rock and roll, sir. Tails is the call. Won the toss. Jump in here, please, Kano. And are going to? Uh, we're going to have a bet. Um, it seems to be the, the nature of the, the uh, white ball cricket that's been played here, certainly in the T20s. And um, it looks like a good surface, so it's important we try and get a, a good score first up uh, and then scrap well with the ball. How happy were you with uh, the performance the other night? Um, yeah, there were a lot of positives. Um, you know, when you, you have games of cricket like that and games of cricket in this part of the world, the margin is, is small in terms of improvement. And when I think you're able to make those improvements, um, the outcome can change quite a lot. So it's important we just focus on those small steps and try and make improvements in this game. Have you changed your playing 11 at all? Uh, we're going for the same team. Awesome. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you. Safi, he's won it. Going to bat first. You probably would have done the same. What do you make of this? Yeah, you know, it looks like a good batting pitch. So hopefully we want you to bat first, but unfortunately toss is not our hand. But we will try our level best to restrict them and 150. Seven wins on the trot. Obviously a good vibe in the dressing room. Um, tonight, have you have you changed your winning side? Yeah, first of all, very good vibes in their teams. And yeah, we made one change. Fakhar Zaman back in their team. Very exciting. Good luck. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. All righty, there you go. Fucker Zaman is back in the side. Loving it. I'll tell you what, Kane Williamson, he's called correctly. They're going to bat first the Kiwis. Well, that has been the trend, uh, Danny. And good evening. Good evening, viewers. Pakistan's track record head in the way is, is pretty good. Uh, they have won um, 13 games out of, out of 20, 23 games. So, so they'll be feeling very good about it. Uh, the pitch looks pretty good it's, there's no grass on it uh, it's it's very similar to what we had against uh, the Australians so that has been the trend for Pakistan that Imad Vaseem since his return he's, he's, he takes on the the new ball and he's been a wicket taker with the new ball but a ball that uh, big in swingers countdown done and dusted Let's rock and roll, please. And it's time to play here in match two. Kiwis need a win. Oh, there's your sighter, and it's gone all the way. First ball maximum. What a start from Manners. Wow. <laughs> well, he has come with a different frame of mind. This time around, the ball sort of slanting away from him, and he just planted his front leg and just gave it everything. What a start. Wonderful start for the New Zealanders. Yeah, that length, wasn't it? It was there for it. He backed himself. Fresh off his 58. And he was miffed with himself. Should have gone on. Helped win the game for the Black Caps. And it's a fairly quick outfield, but there was a little fingertip to it. Oh, a little escort agency there, all the way to the fence, but I think they've done well. I just want to check this upstairs, Baba Azim, he's quite brisk. Yeah, Imad was seen when it comes to the left-handers, he, he struggles to start off. Uh, we've seen it against uh, the Australians also, a little short on that occasion, a little wide. The room was there for Munro to put it away. Wonderful fielding by Baba Azim. Saved a run. Every run's going to be crucial. That side of the boundary is a little bit longer. Yeah, good call, Wack. On that other side of the square here tonight. A fresh 22 yards. It was certainly a uh, characteristic dry looking surface for white ball cricket. What can you say? Sometimes, oh, look, we just leave a little tinge in it. And in a way, that just makes this ball slide on even better, doesn't it? Well, they can do it, but Pakistan's strength is is their spinners, and it's also their middle overs where they where their paces come in and bowl those cutters. They're very good at it, and uh, no grass at all. There's a lot of cracks. Uh, it's not going to spin that much. Oh, it was in the air. Just a single on that occasion. 
So Pakistan's strength is on these sort of pitches so where, where the ball sort of sticks in and it doesn't really come onto the bat that easily and, and they know how to bat on these sort of uh, pitches. So they're playing to their strength. Nice simple batting. Now with uh, Munro back on strike. Let's get out of the blocks early here, Wakar, the stats gurus. Colin Munro, never been dismissed by a left arm spinner in T20 cricket. He's got a heck of a strike rate too, just quietly. Confirmation. Yeah, don't jinx him though. You'd like me to. <laughs> uh, first one gone, 13 without loss. the one change Fakhar Zaman has come in to the side home side that is of course, uh, New Zealand is there are unchanged a couple of nights ago Fahim Ashraf is going to start from the far end since he's been given a role of bowling with the new ball, he's been superb. He's giving Pakistan an early breakthrough. He's hitting the length early in the game. All those dot deliveries. He'll be under pressure against Munro, that's for sure. And aggressive as ever. Colin Munro. And that will be... Uh, Part of the most definitely it would have been discussed. Got to make the most of this power play with the new seed sliding on. Whether it's spin or pace, it should skid on okay early. Well, Pakistan had a wonderful last week or so where they, where they played Australia three games, three T20 games, and now they're playing uh, New Zealand. They won all four games. He's got enough of this. Yeah, it might have been a little bit of a pitching wedge, but it's one bounce for four. Well, he's made up his mind that he's not going to spare anything. Anything uh, even good is going to go after. He's so strong when it's when he's hitting on the own side. Short of a length, planting his front leg, and then just hitting it over mid on. The weight going forward. Wonderful stroke. Good control on that. It sounded pretty good as well. And is. Back to back boundaries here for Monroe. Well, who says that it's important to play with the full face of the bat? Just play nice and straight. Have a look at Monroe. It's all cross batted, but he's just keeping so still. And hitting it so nicely. This one even just a little outside the off stump had enough room to free his arms and a cross bat through that mid off and cover region. There's a little clever piece of bowling here from Fahim. Yeah, very clever, but uh, also on the back foot. He's been hit a couple of boundaries. Now he's got a, he's on a surviving mode. He's just want to get over this over and, and try to bowl those last two deliveries without any more damage. So he's got to bring on his slower ones or a bouncer. He's got to do different. He can't really bowl that length because uh, Colin Munro is, is, is really going after him. He really is a ring field. Seeing the protection. Just the two men as we know. Where would you go now? Where would you bowl here? One to go. He disappeared a little bit, a couple of holes, but what do you want to finish with? Well, I think I'll, I'll go with Shaheen. I know he's been bowling late in the order. He's been bowling after 10 overs. 
but I'll bring him on now because he's tall, he's, uh, he get that extra bounce. So Munro, because he's playing cross bat, bring him on as soon as possible. Till the time he's here on the pitch, bring him on. Fought back well, second half of the over. So we've had two, and it's uh, none for 22. Crowd uh, building more and more here. It's a Friday evening. Big day of the week. Waka Yunus gets his wish. Here's uh, Muhammad Afiz. So just one from uh, Ahmad Wazim. It's time for Mr. Experienced. This form of the game, anyway, with the uh, a new white ball in his hand. Oh! oh a little inside edge. <laughs> I thought he might have even squeezed a single. <laughs> that survives, does Munro. Well, I hope Munro knows that uh, Mohamed Afiz doesn't really spin the ball. He'll just he'll keep bringing it in. He'll make this angle. Look at that ball coming in very close to the leg stump. Oh, oh dear, dear me. In a hurry is Colin Munro. Well, I think that's the right way to go because uh, until this ball is new and, and, and hard and, and it's, it's good to get hold of it, just make sure that you go after every run you can take. First six overs is gonna be, are going to be very, very important. Even with the ball in hand or when you're batting, you bowl good in the first six overs, there is every chance that you'll, that you'll, you'll go ahead of in the game. The same goes for the batters. All Phillips needs to do is, is just to take a single and give strike back to Munro. Oh, no, there's a confusion. Oh, and a misfield. Oh, an opportunity goes begging here. Shut up, Khan. Of all people. Yeah, normally he's, he's, he's so good with throwing, with the fielding. The ground field has been really good big opportunity phillips was off as he hit it he called it up i think he just took his eyes off a little too early again same this time around shadab stopping the ball he's having some issues uh, i feel that he's not comfortable even in earlier when he picked up uh, the last ball he, he was not very comfortable normally he feels in the backward point he had had problems with his groin and his back and and also the foot coming on the pitch. That was the first one. Ah, yes. Stand and deliver. That's an easy game. Yeah, that was easy for Munro. It was a little bit fuller. So... Yeah, he's gonna not spare that because Midoff is up in the circle. All he need to do is just to go over the top, clear that offside fielder. One to go. Oh! It's tight. He wants the uh, wants the single. Gets it. Wonder if they'll come upstairs. Both keeper and bowler were so animated. No. That ends the over. Three done. Twenty nine for none. I think the, the ball definitely clipped the pad first before it hit, hits the bat. But it was definitely going down the leg side. Yeah, maybe hitting at the same time. But the definite pad involved in that. 29 without loss. Good start by the Kiwis. Mandra is looking very dangerous.
Munro striking at exactly 200. Is the norm for this fellow in this format. He's uh, kept the strike. Oh, he's uh, very keen to make the ball disappear here is Munro. And one of those favourite zones of his. Yeah, good change of pace from Fahim A little slower, that last delivery, 126 kilometres an hour. Yeah, maybe just going, drifting down the leg side. Yep, missing the leg stump. Easy decision for the umpire. Third man finally got Deepman Wicket on the fence. And that is that fact! It's gone all the way! Monroe again! Wow! Wow. Really wow. Using the feet against the pacer who's been bowling really well and thunking him over mid off. Look at the weight going into the shot. That's the beauty of that stroke. Wow. Really enjoyed it. Well, he does play in the Caribbean Premier League after all. And there's certainly some calypso about that. Extraordinary. So he's uh, up over 200 now with that strike rate, courtesy of that maximum. Side to come around here, Fahim. And Long on his back. Oh, no, are you joking me? Hafiz. Wow. Saw a shutout with the misfield. Now we've got Hafiz with a drop catch. Well, how much more time do you need to get under the ball? This was easy, the easiest of the catches we have seen in this series, even in the last series. Good change of pace once again, and uh, couldn't really control that stroke. Hit it right at the bottom of the bat. And he had so much time. It's just when he landed, his elbow hitting the ground, and the ball pops out of his hand. Big miss. Phillips on strike now. He looks to give it some bottom hand as well. Wonder how much that is going to come back to haunt the home side. Massive moment in this uh, second match. Caught it there, and as soon as the elbows landed, coughs it up. Take a deep breath, Skip. Still got one to go on this over, so he's fighting back here. Is Fahim again? Well, earlier in the last series against Australia, we saw Trey Malik catching a couple of times on the boundary and he rolling very nicely, keeping the elbows out of the out of the out of the play. And on that occasion, uh, Muhammad Afi is just landing on the elbows, and I think that's not the right way to go. You just got to roll yourself and land on the shoulder, maybe. Given this some stick. Oh, well fielded. Yeah, great hands in the end. Bakazaman from Pakistan. 36 without loss. Very aggressive start here from Monroe. As per loves it. Slightly shorter, slightly wide, and that's what's going to happen. And then a little bit of flight, he was still looking busy. Up and over, and that, oh, straight out of Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, pretty good start this from uh, the Kiwis. Nines they're going at. Uh, look at that. Sixes, balls per six ratio. And there's uh, Christopher Henry Gale behind him. Oh, 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 oh. Every pretty much nine deliveries. Monroe makes the ball disappear out of the park. 
Here's Hassan Ali. And he too, and another very talented young man, to come on and try and get a wicket here. You mentioned pre-show, Wakar. Your countrymen, his bowlers, look to take wickets as well, not just keep the run rate down, get people out. Well, that's the way to go. I think uh, it does not really matter what format are you playing. If you can keep taking wickets, you're always winning the game. And that has been the success of Pakistan team over the last couple of years. Oh, dear. Hassan Ali. Uh, coughed up a no ball with the front foot and it is time for a freebie yeah first time I've seen um, in this last few games that Pakistani bowlers have bowled a no ball the disciplines has been pretty good and also Hassan Ali coming for the first time in the power play so that's a different sort of mindset here we go free hit for the Yorker we've got another no ball have we don't show Safra's armoured now take a deep breath skip again it might be just because they're bowling first there's no pressure that's big no ball that's massive there's no pressure of defending any total so that's why maybe a little irresponsible you know Hassan Ali normally is well behind the line is very good when it comes to bowling disciplines but that's problem for uh, Sir Fraz second conse consecutive uh, noble got away with the first free hit what about this one so he's got two men on the Onside, which are on the boundary, more mid wicket and mid on. The rest are all in the circle, so maybe a slow delivery. There's protection. Uh, Bowler looking to get it full. Shake of the head in there. Concentration. Yeah, first time, in terms of this time of the year, this part of the season, with the Aussies being here. The series and now New Zealand starting with uh, this T20 series. It's the first time, it's a little mini start to the season that uh, Pakistan are not batting first any, in any form. A bold, slows down the angle, well led at Hassan Ali. Well, we spoke about. Uh, the catches where Malik took a wonderful catch the other day in, in, in Abu Dhabi, I think that was. And he just rolled his, himself and did not allow the elbow to hit the ground. And that way the ball stays in your hand. Sometime when the elbow hits, this is what happens. Watch this. Elbow hitting and ball popping out of the hand. That's experience. So he's is very experienced, but it's just that it took a little bit too long to get under the ball. Bit of uh, wrist work there, not quite where he intended. Phillips, but it does allow Munro back on strike now. Two to go in the fifth. It's power play, power play rather. Starting to run away. Change of pace. And some lovely timing once again from Colin Monroe. Another boundary to him. Yeah, he's finding the gap very, very nicely. Once again, the room. Munro, if you give him the room, he's not going to spare you. Right in the middle of the two fielders, although the boundary is big on that side, but that was hit hard. Wonderful stuff. He's uh, 39 from just 21. One more in this and uh, one more over in the power play. A bold. Sonali. It's a full one in. 
11 from the over though we've had five overs and it's 47 without loss here Five overs gone, 47 without loss. Good start. From a New Zealand point of view, particularly Colin Munro, Shahina Freedy, a young man who oh. the bowl the last over the other day. It was a, just a hint, I thought, there of that clipping the boot before yeah, yeah, the bat, yeah. but perhaps not. That Khan alongside me, and uh, some work to do early for Pakistan here, Buzz. Yeah, so far so good from New Zealand. A little bit of shape back in, but you know that Pakistan is under pressure because China Freedy has been brought in in the first six overs. The spinners not really enjoying the power play, which is a little bit of a setback for Pakistan. But saying that, Dooley, we saw in that first game as well, just a couple of overs changes the whole scenario and especially in UAE somebody needs to get 60 70 percent of the runs so that they get a big total Monroe right now 42 he needs to get a 70 80 for New Zealand to get to that 170 pinch one chance 50 partnership comes up with a tight single. But the power hitting has been brilliant from New Zealand. Intensity in the running between the wickets as well. Pakistan just on the back foot fielding wise. That might have been close. But they've dropped a chance. Not really going. Things not really going Pakistan's way because of the pressure applied from the openers. Yeah, that period of play you talked about in Abu Dhabi, 46 runs from over 7 through to 14. But Pakistan really tied things up after the power play. Well, New Zealand got away to a good start as well in that match with uh, Munro doing a bulk of the damage again. Hasn't had a lot of help from Glenn Phillips, 5 from 11. He struggled in his T20 career so far. That strike rate is only just over 100. For an opening batsman, you would want that to be better. Inside edge, inside edge. The good sound, the good sound, yes. Thought so, he's on his way. So Pakistan has struck. Good press from Shain Shah Freedy and just trying to turn it to the leg side. Uh, inside edge to Sarfraz. Welcome wicket for Pakistan. But the pace tried to turn it away on the onside but it was Shine Shah Freedy who got his man and Pakistan getting that first wicket Phillips out for 5 50 for 1 New Zealand skipper Kane Williamson comes to the crease. Best of 73 not out. 50s and 
three matches. Fairly lean run, barring that one innings of 70 last summer. Against England at uh, Westpac Stadium, he scored 70 last summer. There's that little inside edge, the dismissal of Glenn Phillips. Uh, Shaheen Freedy into the attack and success for him straight away. Successful over, 50 for one after the power play. Power play and a good one for New Zealand. Pakistan just climbed back into it late, but it was all about the power of Colin Munro. He's moved through to 43 off 25. Strike rate of 172. He did all the damage inside that first six overs. Chance there to get rid of him. It wasn't uh, to be for Pakistan, but that was the first wicket. Shaheen into the attack, picked up the inside edge of Glenn Phillips' bat. Through to the skipper, Safraz, and Pakistan had New Zealand. 50 for one at the end of six, which incidentally was exactly the same as it was two days ago in Abu Dhabi. down pinch one no oh, confusion ball is in Safraz no <laughs> yeah ball is in and Munro would have been gone Safraz failed to pick up on that he's just looking at the batter's end Safraz but confusion straight away and just a half a chance for Pakistan there So 11 for Kane Williamson two nights ago. That uh, fixture in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, just going back through the last 12 innings, just one score above 20 in, tw in his last 12 T20 internationals. And then he went from the New Zealand summer to the IPL and was magnificent. Captain in the Sunrisers Hyderabad and was absolutely outstanding. It was a appeal and then a run out opportunity. Was heading way down leg. But Hafiz as a bowler is so important to Pakistan cause, in, especially in white ball cricket. Safraz just didn't pick up that he had to throw at the non strikers then because Monroe was. Gone for all money. But Hafiz in white ball cricket, the bowler is so important for Pakistan. He adds depth to that bowling lineup. It's a bit of a clip into the onside, get a couple of runs, but he has depth to that bowling lineup, and more often than not, he's very miserly in these middle overs. He can even open the bowling for Pakistan. Pakistan missed a trick in the Asia Cup where he wasn't selected and they missed him sorely. He's now back in the one-day squad. But even T20 is very efficient. Yeah, there was a time when Pakistan just continued to produce quality seam bowling all-rounders. Now, I know Shah Malik's not allowed to bowl, but uh, the off-spin all-rounders have been the thing more of late and one of the uh, one of the best in the business is the bowling coach isn't he at the moment oh yeah that'll be out that'll be out little inside edge i think it went back onto the pads of munro and trickled through to the keeper whips the bales off and munro will be gone and yet again hafiz dismissed the left-hander he is absolutely brilliant against the left-handers munro trying to force the pace hafiz shortening the length 
again. Clever bowling from Hafiz. So it's gone upstairs for a review for that stumping. Through the process, everything's fine there. No problem whatsoever. Never bowled a no ball. He's not about to start. And that is pretty conclusive. Colin Munro knew it straight away. He is heading off the park. Dismissed for 44 of 20. Fifty-six for two. Colin de Grandom comes to the crease, and uh, interesting move from the New Zealand point of view. But you can absolutely see why they don't want Ross Taylor just starting, along with Kane Williamson, who's just starting at the crease. Bring the power of Colin de Grandom into the middle. Good running. Good running. He wants it on the full, but the bowlers don't want it on the full. They want to scuff the ball up, throw it into the turf, make it reverse later. Hafiz again shortening that length. The ball staying straight on. Inside edge. Monroe trying to smash that down the ground yet again, but Hafiz too clever. He's so brilliant against left-handers. Uncanny how many wickets he gets. But again, this is the phase where Pakistan will apply the squeeze. We've got Imad Wasim now back in the attack. And Hafiz already getting that wicket of Colin Munro. And now Pakistan will try and rush the opposition, get through a few overs. And you've got Shadab as well. So before the batsman looks up, they're already 13, 14 overs gone and pressure on. Yeah, and that's why De Grandom is uh, in the middle right now. Ross Taylor's had his woes against left arm spin. A little bit against leg spin now and then as well. New Zealand want to continue with some power. De Grandom will have a fairly free license. I would think heading out there. You might even find that Tim Seifert could be padded up due to come in as well. Yeah. Williamson will be clever. Maneuvers the field around well. He finds the gaps, particularly against the spin. Corey Anderson padded up. Ross Taylor there. So there is firepower, but power hitting has been difficult in UAE. Saw the likes of that Australian, brutal Australian batting lineup. You've got Chris Lynn, you've got Aaron French, you've got the likes of Maxwell, but. In these conditions, it's very difficult to come out there and start attacking straight away. So it's imperative for a batsman in form and a batsman who's got runs to bat through the innings. Well, all three of those names mentioned, you would say, bowl spin. They might struggle. And that's what worked. 62 for two, eight gone. Sixty-two for two. New Zealand. Monroe was outstanding up front. Phillips struggled again. Tonight just quite been able to get it going in the first two games. De Grandom and Williamson we now face the quality leg spin of Shadab Khan.
Yeah, this will be the battle for the Kiwis. A spin on from both ends now. Shadab Khan being introduced. How will they tackle that? Will they go after him? Yeah. And suddenly it's a different ball game altogether. The power play ball coming on to the bat. Scored freely. Munro just took Pakistan two tasks and suddenly spinners come on. Different game altogether. Push for two here. It's a big side of the ground. No. There's the call early enough from Kane Williamson. This uh, pitch tonight, Buzzard Khan, is quite a way as we look at it to the left-hand side of the block, isn't it? So the leg side as the right-handers are facing the leg spinner now is a big, big boundary. Way to the right-hand side of your screen now as you're looking. And suddenly you see the ball not really coming on. That was quite short and Williamson waited quite a while, but the ball never arrived. It's a pretty short delivery and it was there to be cut through the offside, but lack of pace. Very good. Into the gap. Should push for two this time. And we will. Such a good player, a spin, Kane Williamson. He, he works so hard on it. Leg spin in T20 internationals. Runs 154. Never, only been dismissed once by leg spin in T20 internationals. It's a Shahid Afridi. Right here, this venue. Hello, yeah, Ooh, slow turn, it's not easy. Not easy at all. Pakistan will be loving it. New Zealand just starting to struggle a little. 65 for two. Pakistan haven't been great today. That catch dropped and not on the field as brilliantly as they would like. And this man, quite annoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two for 18 in the last four overs. Make that four overs in one delivery. And Pakistan turning the screws. Okay. Add that one to the package. Yeah, Sarfraz so just telling him ah, that it was a straightforward ball to be stopped. But yeah, Pakistan with this spin attack sort of do this so often after the power play, squeeze the opposition. We saw this in Abu Dhabi, same type of thing. Twenty-eight balls now without a boundary. From New Zealand point of view. And you can see with Imad as well. Two balls are good. Not his fielding, not great fielding, but yeah, just a little bit of a smack to remind himself. Straight down the ground. Got enough of it or not? De Grandom. No, he hasn't. And that's well taken. Shoy Malik, I think it is. He's run across from long on. Not timed. And he holds on to it. Power hitting yet again. Not working. Spin on off a Margo seen Just holding that one back. And Colin de home right at the bottom of the bat. Bat twisting in his hand, ball not arriving. Shweb Malik, he is brilliant. High catches, you want that man underneath them all the time. Imad gets his man, Imad gets a wicket. Pakistan with the spinners get the third wicket. Gulan home out for four, 67 for three. 
67 for three, New Zealand putting the squeeze on uh, the Pakistan spinners, Ross Taylor. Vastly experienced. He was very good in that game in Abu Dhabi. Oh, yeah. A little tired towards the end of his innings, but uh, he did everything he could to try and get New Zealand across the line. 48 off 26. And striking well into the high 170s. And this is the reason he's out in the middle. He's actually in the end closer to long off, but he pulled out did, uh, Asif and left it to the man with the hands, the best hands in the side. Yeah, 30 balls since that last boundary. Power play was 50. And it's suddenly come to a stop. Lovely bowling. And very good period of play this for Pakistan. Halfway through, 68 for three. Scoring rate just dipping a little bit. Mundro was like a hurricane. 6.8 knot is the run rate right now. And this was expected. I've got James Franklin here with me because come the spinners and squeezes on. Yeah, absolutely, Ramiz. There's been a big shift in this game with the introduction of the spin, and there's still going to be a fair bit of it to come from the New Zealand batsmen. I was very interested to see Ross Taylor walk out. I thought they might have introduced Corey Anderson, the left-hander. Got to use his form. I think Ross Taylor batted beautifully in the last game, so he's seen this bowling attack. Almost got New Zealand through in that last match. Got to rotate the strike. I think that's the best possible option that you've got if not getting fours and sixes if not getting loose balls rotate the strike get a single and that's just for me why I thought bring out a left-hander the ability to rotate the strike obviously favorable in terms of the leg spin and the orthodox of Wazim as we look at the screen and the end that Shadab's bowling from he's got a short side on the left of the screen I just thought that maybe a left-hander would be able to, you know, take advantage of the short side on the left of the screen as we look at it as Shadab's bowling. But they're stuck with Ross Taylor, and you rightfully say he is in form at the moment. 35 balls since last boundary was hit, so in need of a big over here in New Zealand just to get things back on track. Ball was coming on to bat when it was new. It's just died down a little. Yeah. Getting the ball to spin. Shadab is not a big spinner of the ball. Very good with his wrong guns and variations. He's quick through the air. Doesn't give the ball a lot of flight. But because the pitch is, is 
turning out to be slow and there's a little bit of spin available as well is turn two or three nicely played chance for two that's good running very good running 72 for three Mad Vaseem to bowl his last over. Yeah, yeah. Last five overs, only 22 runs scored by New Zealand. Yeah, and Mad Vaseem has done beautifully. He got hit for 13 off the very first over of the match. Colin Munro taking tasks to him, but he's come back here beautifully. He's only gone for 10 runs off the last 13 balls he's bowled, so he's doing a great job here for Pakistan. Pakistan wouldn't mind those singles but because a couple of wickets have gone down New Zealand in, in the recovery mode Williamson has got a bit of start 16 from 19 and Taylor will provide the impetus he's the big striker out of the two Bit of hesitation Ross Taylor had a head start and so invited the non-striker for a run in the end the run was completed yeah, we've seen a little bit of confusion with the New Zealand running tonight fortunately for them it hasn't resulted in a run out yet but it's something that they'll definitely want to tidy up throughout the rest of this innings and the matches moving forward yeah. another single Past score here at Dubai in the first innings is 142, so I'm pretty sure New Zealand will have that in mind, around about 140 to 150. So that's just taking the ball over for the next few overs, keeping some wickets in hand to hopefully explode in the last three or four overs. Uh, that's a good stop. They've been a little short in the field, but Shadab is uh, one of the better ones full length dive and I think probably he uh, his body was, was on the ball no I think it's fine he's probably grazed himself it's a rough square oh quicker ball that's well stopped once again so pressure on New Zealand that's good feeling by Pakistan in that over 76 for three Superb from Ahmad Wazim. Great comeback his last three overs. They've only gone for 12 runs. He's ended up one for 25 or four overs. A couple of brilliant pieces of fielding from Pakistan in the last couple of balls. First Shadab Khan at cover. And then from Babra Zahn there to finish off the over. He's been good. Two was none for seven. Pass into the gap for a run. Right, let's go down to Denny Morrison. Yes, well, I've got uh, former New Zealand and Canterbury opening bats, so and now coach of the Black Caps. Uh, got to ask you straight away, Gary Stead. Um, clearly excited to get the role. Um, what do you make of being out here in Dubai? Uh, these conditions against this mob? Oh, look, uh, it's tough conditions out there, and uh, I think we're just going to go through a little stage now of a, a slow rebuild, but, well, hopefully not too slow, and then we'll have a good charge here at the end. So we're in a reasonable position still. We just need to um, hold this partnership, I think, for another over or two and then launch. Not the way I said uh, this mob. The green machine. 
And they're so difficult at home, and look at this. Geez, Kane Williamson makes it look easy. Gary, what would you have said in the team meeting? A little bit, without giving too much away. Win the toss, you bat first. What were you looking for tonight? Uh, I think uh, par scores are somewhere around about 150 if you look at this ground. So, And that's that's been pretty consistent with Abu Dhabi as well. So that's what we're trying to look to get around about that score, and I think we'll be in the game then. Hustle through for a little single here. No, they'll get two. Coming back. I reckon it's all over, Red Rover. Back upstairs to you, gentlemen. Wonderful throw and a very good catch by the bowler because he had to uh, collect it and then whip the bails off in time. It's Ross Taylor who suffered. It was always going to be a dicey second. Left-hander is in, Corey Anderson. Just watch out for the strike rate, 135. He hits them big, best of 94. Picked up the wrong one and played it with the wrist. With Pakistan initiate almost a run out in every innings in T20 since last two years. Have a look at this one. This was a, a dicey, a tight second. Throw was in, bails were off, and Ross was gone. It's a wonderful record to have as a fielding group. And they've lived up to that billing again here tonight. There's always going to be a tight turn. Asavali with a rocket arm, and from deep mid-wicket, straight over the bails, and an easy run out in the end. That's a wide down the leg side. Hey? bit of advantage that you get by having a left-hander in ball has to adjust his line and that is what James you were alluding to early on it's always difficult as a bowling group or as a bowler to constantly have to change your lines no matter how good a bowler Shadab Khan is you would always have to adjust New Zealand 85 for four A goal, good bowling attack, a lot of variety, and so you've got bowlers that can provide you with breakthroughs as well. So if Imad uh, is having a bad day, there'll be someone springing up to showcase his talent and pick up a wicket or two. Hafiz today picked up a wicket. Right, yeah, yeah. Difficult to square cut the ball on this track, difficult to pull the ball as well, especially in this part of the innings, the middle phase of the innings. Ball not reaching, and so you're taxing yourself. You've got to really time it well enough. Kane Williamson this year in T20s. Just one big score of 72 versus England. Suffering with a bout of 
low scores. Well, the, the past scores in this part of the world would always suggest that it is difficult to, to score boundaries, and it's all about rotating strike and moving the ball around, trying to move the outfielders and put pressure on them for scoring twos, and you pick off your boundaries when and if you can. Obviously, the best time to score boundaries is in the power play, and New Zealand have done pretty well at that in this game and in, in, in the last, but it's been through this middle period that they've really struggled. Yeah, the timing seems to go off in the middle part of the innings. That could be because of the slowness of the pitch with the ball getting a little soft as well. Pakistan uh, have got strength all round till the 20th over, and that uh, could be the other reason. So it's not that they start well, they do the middle part impressively as well. And then they've got the, uh, the death bowlers. Yeah, Pakistan have got three brilliant spin bowlers. Sure, one of them might be a bit of a part-timer in Muhammad Hafiz, but he's he's still pretty good by world standards. Williamson's innings is the key here. 26 of 26. Is, he must not throw it away now. Because we've seen new batsmen taking a little bit of time to warm up to the task. Got to make sure that he hangs in there and go till the end. Absolutely, he's got to be there at the bitter end. And hopefully Anderson or Seifert to come and produce a bit of a cameo around his innings. Pass into the gap. This time it's a loud call for just 1-1. One, one. Not going to take any more risks. New Zealand, it appears. But what I find he has been Shah shy Afridi can bowl in the middle, can bowl with the new ball, and obviously Safraz is using him in the last couple of overs. For an 18 year old, that is a real <laughs> thumbs up. Yeah, I haven't seen too much of him, but I've been really impressed from what I have seen. Called upon to bowl the last over in the last game to defend a total. He did the job for his captain, and he's been very good again tonight. Laboring just a little bit when he's looking to hit the ball hard, Williamson. He's got a strike rate of 100, 90 for four. The last nine overs have produced 43 runs. So eight and over 138. The average is around 145. So look to get 10 and over New Zealand. They've got six wickets in the tank. Yeah, nine will be some good going. You'd think that it would have to predominantly come from Corey Anderson or Tim Seifert with Kane Williamson just playing that anchor role in the background. Not known for his power hitting, but he's very good at manoeuvring the ball around the field. He's only going to get a good title. He's got to be there at the end. Gets it over six foot seven. No, is the call that throws in, and he makes his ground as well. <laughs> Confusion again. Yeah, but there we go from Kane. A little bit of innovation. Just helping the ball ramping it up and over the short fine leg. But again, New Zealand with their calling tonight. There's been a bit of confusion out there in the middle. Ross Taylor unfortunately got run out. And Kane Williamson, thankfully, from a New Zealand point of view, was able to get back into his crease in time. The good ball, Yorker length. Squeeze for a run. The end now that Corey Anderson is at, he's on strike. This end suits his left hand. It's a huge boundary here to the right side of the ground as we see 
But over to our left, there's a slightly shorter boundary. And for the left-hander, Corey Anderson, that's going to suit his power. That's an area he loves to go long on in the bottom left-hand corner, right round to the top left-hand part of the screen. He loves that area, and that will be an area he's targeting. Another Yorker, that's good bowling. You'd know what kind of pressure a bowler is under when he's bowling in the 15th over, James. And to get the Yorker right is a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure Fahim Ashraf will be well and truly aware of Corey Anderson's power. He'll know he'll be have to be absolutely spot on with his execution here. Particularly when he's going at the stumps, he won't want to miss his length. He want to make sure he's getting those Yorkers in or even just staying wider to Corey Anderson, maybe getting him to hit through the offside, or he's so strong through the leg side of the ground. That's gone up in the air into the gap for four. I think he picked up the slow ball very early. There's a case in point there from Corey Anderson. Might have been a slight change in pace there from Ashraf. It was just a length, that short side of the ground for Corey. He's not going to turn it down when it's on offer. A swivel pull between deep square leg and deep mid wicket. So much power there. Just helps himself. It's just the second boundary in the last 10 overs. Much needed for New Zealand. Follows it up with an excellent Yorker. Full length once again from Fahim Ashraf. Two dots and two Yorkers. And almost getting a great result in the last one. Yeah, superb from Ashraf. If I was him, I'd be just sticking to this delivery tonight. He's bowled three of them superbly already in this over. He's obviously feeling this one. He's feeling the Yorker. If I was him, I'd be sticking to those. Brilliant. Uh, slippery is quick enough to keep you honest. With the action and showing his class with a full length delivery. Will he go again? This fine leg up in the ring. Can't get it wrong. Can't get it on the pads. Big shot once again into the gap and four. 100 comes up for New Zealand. Costly over and turned out to be in the end, even though we saw some lovely Yorkers from Fahim. 11 from it. 101 for four. Again, Fahim Ashraf just missing his length, trying to change the pace. I'm not sure why he's going away from his Yorkers, because they're coming out beautifully. Corey Anderson again. Just opens up his front side of his body to access that leg side. And again, just finds that gap between deep square and deep mid wicket. Another useful boundary for New Zealand. Five to go. 101 for four. New Zealand desperately needing that last over. 11 from it. A couple of boundaries from Corey Anderson. 10 and over. 150. Very competitive. Over the top from Williamson. Oh, he might have pick up another one here. He will. Lovely placement. Well, he looks so good when he's looking to go over the top, especially toward offside. The Fraz is not happy with the Shadab for flighting the ball. That's, this was well flighted, got to the pitch quite nicely, Kane Williamson. And he's so good, he loves that area over that extra cover. When you bowl a little short, it doesn't really come onto the bat. That's what Sarfraz is asking Shadab to do. Just bowl a little shorter. Don't have to really come up or ball full. There is a, quite a bit of spin for the wrist spinner. And also ball sticking a little bit. Got 
like that one full enough to be Yorker length. One fifty, Dooley. I think that's what probably New Zealand looking at. Uh, anything under one fifty, it'd be hard, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Just that psychological total, isn't it? One fifty. Pick up one or two wickets in the first six, seven overs, and then get the spinners into the game. Oh, a little toe ender from Williamson. Looking to pull that away shorter length delivery no timing Tim Seifert and Tim Southey for Tim squared at seven and eight hurries that one through finishes a spell for shut up none for 24 off his four 109 for four Most expensive bowler, Hassan Ali. Just the one over for 11. Fahim Ashraf has got one to go, and Shaheen Shafridi with one to go, uh, two to go. They only need one from Hassan now. If he bowls it well and continues to do that, he might get another. I think that's what Sir Fazl is thinking. Uh, the first over from Hassan Ali. Uh, cost him 11 runs so he's thinking okay I'm gonna bring him on now and, and he's experienced he knows how to ball in these sort of situations in this sort of condition so if he bowls well uh, I'll continue with him because you need experience at the back end of the game and and leave maybe Shaheen Shah maybe bowl one over so he's got he's got a choice to go out with anyone Chance at the bowlers end. Needed a direct hit. Yeah, the fielders are sitting a little deep. So it's going to be hard for for someone to just target the stumps from there. So easy singles are available. And I think Pakistan would be happy if New Zealand takes singles and, and don't hit boundaries. It's time to hit boundaries for the New Zealanders. Yeah, you need at least one and over, don't you, in the back end. Last four overs, one boundary per over. Can't find it there. Actually missed his length too, Wakar. That was probably a decent length to get underneath, but it was a slower ball. Yeah, purely because it was a slower ball. Uh, it, it, it just misread the pace of the ball, and, and ball sort of bounced a little bit more, or spun a little bit. That's why I couldn't really get hold of it. Gets that and gets it well, does Anderson. That's the power he's got. Misses his mark by a minimal amount, Hassan Ali. Yeah, he was looking for that sh that Yorker. And uh, I think Anderson was ready for it. He just met, read his mind quite quite nicely and, and got under the ball. Hit it really had a, he went really flat and far. He hasn't missed by much. That is a terrific shot from a... A really low full toss to stay low enough. Short gap for back to back boundaries. Well, things are moving for the Kiwis. Slow bouncer. I think Corey Anderson is finding his rhythm now. He's getting to the 
pace of the pitch, finding the gap. They need few more of those to get a good total on the board. Yeah, it's vitally important from a New Zealand point of view moving forward as well. Waka, a fit, healthy Corey Anderson is such a makes such a difference to this New Zealand side through the middle middle overs with the ball, middle order with the bat. Oh, four more. Look for the Yorker, tried to cramp him. Anderson was up to the mark. Outstanding finish to the over. 6 4 4, 125 for four. Well, there was nothing wrong with the delivery. I thought it was a very good delivery right there on the, on the pads and wasn't there to be hit for four. This went through the legs for the edge. Little unlucky, Hassan Ali. But New Zealand will take every single run. That's the first one. Went quickly to the boundary. Slow bouncer, controlled it very well. And this was a beautiful Yorker, but just gone for four. Inside edge, through the legs. Corey Anderson, big over for New Zealand, the last one. In the air, should be taken, is taken comfortably. Bakhazaman takes the catch and Williamson's innings comes to an end. Well, he wanted to sort of chip it in the air for maybe a couple, that's why he ran quickly. He didn't mean to hit it that good, that well. He went more toward offside. Wanted to hit there. He timed it too nicely. He never wanted to time that well. Pakistan ever a mixed bag when you talk about the fielding today. Umpire wanted to check the no ball. There's no issue there. Ken Williamson gone for 37 of 34 deliveries. 125 for five New Zealand. Tim Seifert is the new batsman. New Zealand skipper Kane Williamson dismissed for 37. Strike rate of 138, that average just nine. The very good player at the domestic level. Lovely. Another slow delivery. That's two in a row. Picked up the wicket of Kane Williamson with a just an off-speed delivery. Rolled his fingers across it, chipping it in for the league side. Well, I'm, I'm very impressed with Shaheen Shah's uh, use of that slow delivery and use of uh, those bounces and slow bounces. He's, he's becoming a very good T20 bowler. He's tall, got good pace. Right, very well bowled again. He's played seven T20 games this uh, season and he's been pretty good. Most of the time he's been given the ball at the back end of the game, given the responsibility to bowl with the old ball, come, always come after 10 overs are gone. So he's learning quickly. Chance, no. Side on. Would have been quite close. Yeah, nothing much to sort of aim at from where he was. 
is what wicket in a bit and he was a little hesitant of throwing it too hard Yeah, he's been a, he's learning all the time, isn't he? I, I thought he missed his mark a couple of times in that last match. With uh, New Zealand needed 17 off that last over, and he bowls a good length. And when you're tall, Akar, as you know, you bowl that length. It's very difficult for the batsman to get onto it. Hits the splice of the bat a lot. That Yorker right. Yeah, it was just the fact that Ross Taylor was quite tired, I think, at the back end of that last game because he gave him a couple of full tosses that could easily have gone out of the park at another at another stage. But he's learning all the time. And uh, he had 17 runs to defend, which is very rarely done as far as scoring more than 17 in T20 internationals. But each game, he just you find him learning, getting better. And he's a great prospect for Pakistan. And again, brilliant. Well, he had a bit more time, Shadab, this time around to get him run out. 126 for five. Well, Pakistan had few opportunities in this game to get the people run out. It came in very, very quickly. He had a good bounce, carried, carried him nicely, got underarm, but missed the stumps once again. Oh, look at that last over just the one run and a wicket from Shaheen Afridi that was outstanding after the big over of Hassan Ali's two overs remaining for New Zealand Hassan Ali who continue was taken to a little bit in the last three deliveries of last over by Anderson. Corey Anderson. York is spot on on this occasion. Had options, didn't he, Safraz? He could have gone back to Fahim Ashraf. He bowled quite nicely. Shaheen will definitely finish off after that last over that he bowled. Yeah, a little bit surprising for me. He could have... Uh... Yes, gone for Fahim because he bowled very nicely earlier. This Hassan uh, not really getting his rhythm, not really getting his line right. A couple of uh, big blows in the last uh, over. Hit away through the offside from Tim Seifert. Picks up a boundary. Yeah, Hassan Ali is struggling with, especially with the left hand, right hand. Out there in the middle, he was uh, trying to get the Yorker in once again, got it wrong. And Seifert putting it away, hit it really hard. Changes in the field. Deep mid wicket going out to the uh, three quarters of the way to the boundary. Short deliveries. Oh, nice. Clever. Pick up one only. Pakistan has been playing with three seamers in this in this series. Even in the last series, they they played with three seamers, and and out of the three, I think Fahim uh, Fahim Ashraf bowled well with the new ball, but uh, Shine Shine Afridi. Oh dear, that's gone. That's gone. That's gone for six. Big hit. They need few of those. New Zealand. 
Yes, me, he's done well to get this out there. This is wide of off stump, and it's a slower ball. How's he done that? I mean, it's hit the bottom edge of the bat as well and still gone for six. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Watch out, security man. Yeah, those big bats and powerful boys nowadays, they can hit it far. That one fine. Fielder will get around. They'll pick up a couple, though. Well, another expensive over from Hassan Ali. 14 already given. There's another delivery left. The New Zealand uh, are creeping toward that 150 mark. It's very much uh, gettable now. Still one more over after this. Been good, Corey Anderson. He's made the difference. Seifert pushed for two, or they'll just leave Anderson on strike. No, he will. He'll come back for two. Pulls out the dive. I'll go upstairs and have a look at this one. A little bit closer than you might think. The throw was quite good. But he doesn't seem too concerned out in the middle. Thought it was pretty close. The naked eye. All good. All good. Excellent dive. Body on the line. New rules, of course, once the bat crosses the line and is grounded, it's all OK. No matter whether it bounces up afterwards. 142 for five. One to go. Last over. Over the keeper. That's what Tim Seifert can do, and it's gone all the way as well. Typical little wicket keeper. He'll find a way. Yeah, it seemed that he, he knew it what Shine is going to do. That he was looking for that Yorker and uh, got under it and stayed very low. Got moved more toward the offside and used the pace. Beautifully done. Good start of the over. That's what happened in the last game, wasn't it? In the last over, he, he bowled a couple of full tosses that could have gone. And power as well. Not enough, though. Not enough. Straight up. Yeah. Shut up, Khan. Too high, not long enough. Another slower ball, I think, from Shaheen, and he gets a bit of revenge. I don't think New Zealand would mind that. But yeah, that was a wicket for a young Shaheen Shah. Smartly bowled, another slow delivery. Although he was in the slot, but because of his height, he gets that extra bounce. Yeah, toe end of the bat. Went up in the air for a long time. Shadab, a wonderful fielder, great hands. No problem for him. Tim gone for 11, it's 148 for 6. Four balls remaining. Anderson on strike. He'll only get one. Can't get it through. Just a little error with a big full toss first ball, but he's come back nicely, Shaheen. Slower ball, taking it away from the right-handed Tim Seifert. And a comfortable catch. Three balls remaining. Tim Saudi comes onto the crease. Very experienced. Oh, 
pace. He'll steal one, and Sally will be run out. Sally will be run out, just desperate to get Corey Anderson back on strike. They would have discussed that. Do we run one run to the keeper? They did, and Safraz was onto it. He knew the plan. Yeah. Good delivery, quicker delivery. But to look at Safraz, he was quick and throwing. He knew this was going to happen. And uh, flicking it back onto the stumps, Shaheen Shah. Another wicket in the last over gone. So that's uh, seven gone for 149. Tim Saudi gone without scoring. Well, very casual from Shaheen. Two balls to go. Corey Anderson back on strike. Oh, he got length. He got length. They'll have to go two. Push hard. 150 comes up with one ball remaining. Adam Milne is the new batsman. Non striker's end. All he's got to do is run. Wicket. It was very good thinking from Safraz. And then the bowler who was. Blinded a little bit by Tim Southey and then just a little backhand flick. Casual, but accurate. Oh, he liked it. Swung away into the leg side. There'll be another two. And that'll be the end of it. Just the one boundary from the spell of bowling from Shaheen. That was the first ball of his last over that went for six. And he's bowled four overs, three for 20. Outstanding performance from the young man. Great work from Corey Anderson as well to finish 44 from 25. And New Zealand have posted what will prove to be on this surface a pretty competitive target as far as history is concerned. Waka. Yeah, he bowled really well. For, a, for such a young kid at this level, he bowled extremely well. He was uh... on, Jesse, we average is incredible with a 124 strike rate as well. On, yeah, he's been very consistent and very good to watch. Extremely well balanced and attractive batsman. Ajaz Patel, 30 years of age. Oh, no, this is uh, a brave move. This could backfire also. Fakhar is a left-hander, is a big striker. Well, the leg side bases have been covered to a certain degree. But this should be an interesting watch this. Here we go. Run chase from Pakistan. Gets off the mark with a four. Cuts it well. Yeah, and the issue with this is to try not to allow Fakhar Zaman a free hit on the leg side. But just errs too wide, very first up. New ball, slightly slippery, may have just slipped out of the hands and it races across the turf for four. There's another one, just like the other one. A front foot cut, that was the only difference this time, but two balls, two balls. Pakistan wanted to get off to a brisk start. Well, they have one. That's a quality shot. Look at how he plays this. What a straight bat. He's just throwing the hands through the ball. Knows exactly where he wants to hit it because he's got a little bit of width. Down the pitch, picks up a single. Pakistan need to get off to a good start. I think that's where they have at times struggled. At the top of the innings. Average power play run at 44, not massive.
Yeah, he'll keep on doing that. He would be workmanlike early on, Baba. That's how he bats. And off late, he's decided to bat through the innings. He's been such quality that uh, it's difficult to get him out. Very, very sound technique. Mr. Miski just need 88 more runs, Barbarazam, to be the quickest to 1,000 T20 international runs ever. So, he, yeah, he needs to get over the line in two matches, two innings. Eleven from the first over. Well, two boundaries off the first two deliveries, so eight. With the first two, decent comeback. Experience in Shweb and Hafiz. Asif is a big striker of the ball. Safraz is runner ball player. Fahim Imad bat later down the order and can hit the ball hard. But Babar Azam will be the fulcrum. He'll be there as a glue to hold the innings together. Tim Saudi coming on to ball. And that's the natural pattern against the left-hander. Bowlers try to just get that ball back into the stumps and aim middle and leg stump line. Very fluent through the offside, likes to cut the ball. Yeah, the, the scouting reports will all be done on Fakhar Zaman. They'll tell you to tie him up, bowl in at the pads, in at the legs. Don't allow him any room whatsoever. Also, don't get too short. Cut and pull. There's no issue with the pull shot, the hook shot to try and make him use the crease a bit more, so keep him nice and tight. Inside edge and four. Got out cutting the ball in the first innings, in the first game. Barbarazan this time, lucky. Nothing wrong with the delivery. Again, a little bit of shape from Tim Southey. Too close to cut. But he gets away with it. Cutting the ball is difficult on, on a slow pitch like this, so you're better off playing it with the full face of the blade, maybe off the back foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the stumps, gets the ball away from the stumps towards the leg side. A very good at rotation of strike. Barber is not a big striker of the, of the ball, but very good at manipulating the strike. Yeah, looking to slash it past point, was caught behind. Quick delivery from Mill. Oh, looking for the uppercut. Yeah, not a bad option with third man up inside the circle. Banging it into the surface. About to say, Ramiz, I don't know whether this pitch will have the same pace and zip in it that we saw from that wicket. Adam Mill got it through around about 144, 145 down in Abu Dhabi. It just doesn't look like it's quite got the same sheen on it to allow that pace. Into the gap and four. That's well timed and in the end. Well placed. Got to adjust the fast bowlers. It is a slow pitch. And they're bowling in the second part of the inning. So you've got to adjust. Maybe look for off cutters, the slow ball. Look for variations. Quality. Just gives himself a little bit of room. We talked about no width. Scouting reports. No width to Fakhazaman whatsoever. Finds the gap. 
Finds the middle of the bat. Too easy. Yeah. Uh, that was the slow ball and got no timing on it. That's the way to go. You've got to mix them up like this. After two, 22 without a wicket, Pakistan. Southie pressing after the ball. Pabarazam ends up out of the pitcher shot. He was never in any danger though. Ten matches, one ten while chasing under Safras. It's an incredible record. For a team that is not really well renowned to chase down targets. Uh, it's not reached that stage where you start biting on your nails, but uh, it's just a little bit concerned, Safraz. Oh, uh, made a beautiful sound of the blade. Extra pace will provide timing for the batsman. So even Stevens after 2.1, 22 plays 22. Oh, that is massive! Muscled, bludgeoned. It's the top tier. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please, Colin Munro. Have a look at that. Take note. Just on the up. Got length that he was able to get under and just swiveled beautifully here. That was what it was all about. It was neither here nor there as far as the delivery was concerned. Not short enough, not full enough, and Fakhar Zaman has met that. Again, times the ball beautifully, runs with the shot. Excellent running from Fakhar. So he'll uh, give you big shots and also run beautifully. Very good awareness from him. Now he burst on the scene, didn't he? And, and just lost his way a little bit. And it happens though, Ramiz, at international level, there's so much cricket and data around about players if so you cut this off it'll be a couple oh, a little digs that knee into the ground into the soft turf watch the left knee when he tries to slide just digs into the turf be careful with those that can catch and that's when the old groins start to go or even the knee it's pretty tall is well with six feet yeah very risky very good in that area baba You get back to Fakhar Zaman. So much analysis done by players and bowlers around the world. He has to change his game. He just has to adapt. Little things that bowlers are coming at him with now. He wants to continue to play international cricket and continue to prosper. Just needs to figure out a way to contemplate it, change his game a little bit. From a Pakistan point of view, they desperately need him. Hey. Good ball, Yorker, I saw him exposing the stumps and fired it in. Good thinking from Mill. After 3.33 without a wicket, Pakistan going well. It looks to give himself room, but has the presence of mind to just clamp down on it. And still try and hit it too hard, he thinks, OK, I'm out of position here. Clamp down on it, gets away with it.
But there's a failure there for that angle. Quite amazing. First three overs, 11 runs in all the three. Made a lovely graphic as if it was a set of stumps. All it needed was uh, a pair of bales. Have a look. That's single spoiling the graphic, but uh, tremendous start. Good looking start. <laughs> You'd want a wicket because in a run chase you want a couple of wickets to fall to put pressure on Safrazes and his men. This so far has been an excellent start to say the least. Fakhar in form. Oh, that was uh, unnecessary. That was forced shot. He's such a good player down the ground, not very good at pulling the ball early on. All he has to do is just work away to find singles, rotate the strike and leave it to Fakhar Zaman to bludgeon the ball. Did he hit that? Well, I don't think... I, I think Tim Seifert should have got his gloves underneath that. I mean, the fingers were pointing down at the ground. If he's just dived forward a little bit and those gloves are underneath it, it was a good sound. I'm still not convinced whether it was bat or just the bottom of the thigh pad. But uh, Seifert should have done better. I thought he initially had it. If there was an edge, it looked pretty casual because he didn't look desperate at all. Kind of an off cutter. Yeah, probably an under edge. Ball carrying, almost carrying. It, it had carried. If his gloves uh in the normal way and actually scooping under the ball he, he should be taking that no pace on the ball that's good bowling from tim south he's got now five four dots on the row in a row that's good thinking because he went for plenty in his last over how well he's adapted and adjusted that's quality for you Fielders, look for the fielders now to be right on the edge of that circle. Stay there. Don't ruin this over with charging in and missing the ball. Just stay on the edge of the circle. Pace off again. Really well done. Brilliant over. Great comeback over from Tim Southey. 35 without loss. Going to be a very good run chase very good evening for the spectators as well new zealand feel brilliantly showed how good they were or are in the last game cracked into the gap and four should have been stopped could he have stopped it beautifully timed by bauer he's so good through the offside very fluent easy on the eye and graceful yeah, I think this is just well placed. But it's there, isn't it? It's just length from Adam Milne, unfortunately. Timing and placement, no chance for the New Zealand fieldsman. Covers the stumps, works it away off the stumps for a run. Hold some very good slow balls in Abu Dhabi, did Adam Milne. Look to see one tonight. Good time for that experiment to the left-hander. And, uh, well, he's pacey, he's got pace, so a slow ball could be a, a deception weapon. Does he have the confidence? Tim Saudi is having a word with him. Obviously, Tim Saudi bowled beautifully, bowled a lot of cutters in his last over, and I'm, I'm sure they'll be talking about 
rejigging it, just rebooting the act. There's a the slow ball, and it works straight away. You noticed it in the last over from Southie, didn't we, that without pace on the ball, it was hard to hit through the line. Milne's got a couple of good slow balls. That one's the, the leg roller out of the back of the hand. It, it loops. He's also got an off-spin slow ball. That's uh, good from Tim Southie. At times, you need a bit of clarity, and I'm sure he's providing that to him. Up in the air, and brilliant, Williamson, you've got to be kidding me. It's a blinder, he can't believe his luck. Flying off the turf and one-handed catch. Fantastic effort. Uh, not for the first time if you're a New Zealand cricket fan. This has been seen before, Kane Williamson diving away, one-handed catches in the gully. Usually see it in the white clothing. This time, in the coloured clothing, so often finds himself at mid-off. Brilliant, brilliant. Diving away to his left, picks up the big wicket. And duly no reaction whatsoever, as if it was meant to be caught. No big deal, but what a splendid fielding effort. Pagazaman exits after scoring 24, 40 for one. Experimenting with Asif Ali at number three. He's got the numbers to uh, dash the hopes of the opposition. 147 strike rate, average of 24. That's a fuller length ball that's put away for a run, so he's off the mark. New Zealand fielded like a breeze in the first game and uh, well i'm sure we'll have a look at williamson's great effort at mid-off yeah it was airborne one-handed catch at mid-off unbelievable feeling it Not a Bennett, bad uh, end at all. Seven runs and a wicket, 42 for one. Yeah, pulled things back quite nicely the last couple of overs. Good one from Tim Southey, then this catch. And just seven runs from the Adam Milne over. Looks like Pakistan were getting away on New Zealand early. And they'll be hoping that they can now bring the spinners in at the end of maybe the fifth over. Just start to pull things back exactly like Pakistan did through those middle overs. Uh, one of the places to be, VIP section. Here at the... Uh Dubai International Cricket Stadium. It's time for uh, Colin de Gronholm to step a centre stage and disappear. He's gone straight away through extra cover. Bazard Khan, good evening. Served up. Absolute gift. Outside off stump, short and wide. Barbarazam will hit those to the fans all day. Poor start. And all night. Oh, then he hit two leaks side. He's got away with this one. 
Ashafali. Take a chill pill. Get back. Yeah. Got away with that leg side delivery, and Asif Ali got away with almost running out. Oh, and another one. Ho, ho, ho. Stay awake. Everyone. Pick up and throw. And he's made it. But um gotta give that one of those Danny Aram A little bit of coy back there. Now danger man, fuck as a man is back in the hut. Extraordinary catch from Williamson as if he was just well a Sunday stroll, dive, put it in sleep. Easy peasy. But he did make it look <laughs> that easy. It was alright though. Not too bad. One for the uh, vault locker. I think we'll see that one again, Baz. The season here in the UAE. We have to put that together. Get VT downstairs to sort that out. Pile a little library of some crackers that we're hoping to see. During this part of the season here in the UAE. Coming to the last ball of the power play, the power play was very good for New Zealand. Got 50, Pakistan 49 for one, but it got difficult after that for New Zealand with the spinners. Oh, and again! Now, a half century comes up in terms of the team score for Pakistan. We've had the power play done and dusted, it is that score, 50 for one. They started off with Bakr Zaman, very strong through the offside, square of the wicket. And Pakistan looked to capitalise through that area. Fantastic six as well. Anything short, put away, beautiful cover drive, elegant as ever. And then that absolute scorcher, Ken Williamson. Power play finished. Another small spin. Patel. But uh, this uh, run rate ticking along rather sweetly for the home side. Don't have to do anything rash here, even though uh, Asavali's been trying to hustle some early quick singles. Have to uh, reload this one. Said asking, as 102 off 83. All very sedate, isn't it for you? Look at you, Bears. Chilling. Yeah, New Zealand will have to replicate what the Pakistani spinners did. The next five overs, Pakistani spinners after the power play really squeezed the opposition. The one thing Pakistani batsmen do have is the ability to rotate strike. They're adept at playing not the slowness, but not the spin, but the slowness of the pitch, and they're adept to able to to rotate the strike, and that'll give them an advantage. And another stat which doesn't go in New Zealand's favour is that the last. Ten times Pakistan have chased in T20s. They won all of them. You're yeah, quite good. Oh, you guys, that is. Nice side, so we've had the wide thrown. So here's the extra delivery, and does it cost Patel oh, Jesse, in New Zealand? Morning, can he sew this up? Flying Williamson, is it? Skipper, yeah. 
Seven down, 57 for you. Joy, batting second, knowing what you're after, wanting to track down. A bit of worm graphic, stating the obvious here, but uh, New Zealand could do with a wicket or two. At the stage now, had seven. Moment, home side doing well. Can't bowl there. He's got away with another one there to climb home, I reckon. The good thing is that he's not giving the batsman any pace at all. He's bowling those cutters, and that's the way to go. Pace on the ball, and it's all too easy for the batsman. A bit straighter, that one, isn't it? That's a nice one. The other ones have been a little bit too straight, more leg stumpish. Whereas that one, uh, slightly better line, covering. Needs to get into that Gavin Larson mode. Ball stump to stump, keeper up to the stumps. You liked old Gav, didn't you? He's a uh, convener of selectors, of course, for uh, New Zealand side and the setup, New Zealand cricket. Missing your grey way, there old Gav. So played a lot of one international cricket with uh, Gavin Larson. I saw him, in fact, at the ICC Under 19 World Cup in the Garden City here in Christchurch. Sat in the sun sideline and chewed the fat. Great old chant. Yeah, you'd think these conditions would suit a Larson type with uh, Cypher coming up, standing up to the stumps. He's, well, he's content to stay back. New Zealand dearly love to squeeze another wicket here. It's all very easy at the moment. It's just rotation of strike. It's just singles, but it just means that scoreboard ticks over. Asking rate of 7.67, that can be caught up. But these middle overs is where the game is won or lost. If New Zealand get a squeeze on, they'll be in with a chance. Well bowled. It's a good over, just the four from it at six. Hi, Mum. Yeah, peace, loving good vibes here at uh, Dubai International Cricket Stadium. We've got uh, Ishodi. This is a uh, big moment in this match here. Wrist spinner on. Abarazim is in, but not on strike. Can't bowl there, Ish, because that's what happens. You disappear. Good start for Pakistan to the ninth. Too short, just stood up and Asif Ali banged it away, leg side. Yeah, slowness of the pitch, he could hit it anywhere. And he's hit it just square of mid-wicket. Yeah. Key, as I say, with uh, the wrist spinner on, has to be precise. Runs down and... Search for a wicket here, New Zealand. 
stay in this contest. Can all change in a half an over as we all appreciate. Take one and be happy. You can just out the events. After change is length, quickly. Too short at the moment, just too easy. Rock back and pull it away leg side. Williamson just having a chat with his bowler. They tweak the field and uh, Ross Taylor's going to come on to the onside. And Patel is uh, going to go uh, like a short third man, very fine, inside the circle. Southey is uh, like a uh, deep gully towards the 30-metre circle. So there's that protection for the wrist spinner. Rotation, rotation, rotation. So far, he's just been a little too short. Ball just stood up. He can cut it through the offside and pull shot with the boundary in the over. So, just not getting it right this first over. Oh, yeah, sort of a come at the bowler there, and he'll keep the strike. So. Uh, Positivity going and hands it back to Asif. Undergo in the ninth. Where does he go here? Asif Ali. Get a two, it's not there. So uh, nine off the ninth. It's 70 for one. Gronom, he's uh, into his third. In discussions with his skipper and senior pro there, in Ross Taylor. And Pakistan uh, dressing room, he was very happy, relaxed. Tweak it, field it is. Just seems under control for Pakistan at the moment. One down, and the rotation of strike going on merrily. Barbar Azam, 30 of 27, and Asif Ali striking at 15 of just 14. So it's no problems. It seems as if a little bit of lack of pressure applied on the batsmen. Not been able to stem these singles, yes. Not a bad result, but look at the context of the game. They need wickets, they need something to, to happen right now. Yeah, Colin de Grunholm. So a look at uh, all rounders in the side bears. Somebody could come on. It's Winkle a wicket. Something unique. Just 14 dots. So 15 dots only. And it's difficult for the fielding side then to apply the pressure. If the bowlers can get those dot balls together, then there'll be a big shot. Then there'll be pressure on the batsman. Pulled out. Someone's uh, disturbed. Asifali. Oh. On the charge. Here's Asif. And he is uh, going to keep the strike. Well, uh, half the overs are gone. 
and Pakistan a 75 for one. Sodi may pick up his first wicket, he slipped and he's grasped it. Ran on there. Well, a little bit of, bit of dew on the field, that could have been a reason for him slipping and sliding and grassing it. Opportunity created and not taken by New Zealand. Well, that might be the opportunity in the game that New Zealand might look back on and wish they made better use of it. No, is the call run out? Ah! I think he's, he's in. He's, he's not happy at all. Barbara Azam is going to have a word. He's got to have a word, a quiet word with his partner. How close is this? Is he gone? Looks as though he's going to make his ground. Julian and Ben full cup of balls. And East Sodi's second over. Unfortunately, the very first ball of this over. Colin de Granholm slipped over it, long on. And then fumbled the catch. Relatively simple chance if it wasn't for the stumbling before trying to take the catch. He's quick through the air, he's tall, he's not a big spinner on the ball, more of a top spinner. There you see him just misjudging it initially, then slipped. Still had chance to grab it, but uh, he dropped it in the air. Costly miss. New Zealand in need of wickets. Even with the slip, Colin de Granholm's got a fantastic pair of hands. He doesn't drop many, that's for sure. He'd be disappointed that he, he put that one down. I feel as though that is quite a big moment in this game. That's a real wide one. So pressure has been exerted here. New Zealand must make something out of it. There's two runs so far in this over, a catch dropped. Pakistan looking just a wee bit desperate. That upish into the gap that is well placed and magnificently timed. That's a release shot and it's a four. It absolutely kills you as a fielding unit, particularly after the start of the over. Dropped opportunity, run out chance. A little bit of pressure on the batsman. But take nothing away from Barbara Azam. It's a wonderful shot up and over cover for four runs. He's averaging 68 this year, Barbara Azam, in T20 internationals. Goes back, cuts, gets it through. Got the fingertips on the ball. Two runs, so not a bad finish to the over. Eight from it, 83 for one. Good first half from New Zealand. Munro again in the runs. Got them off to a great start. Williamson was the backbone of the innings. And then there was great fire at the end from Corey Anderson. He finished on 44 off 25 balls. They got through to a very good score. But at the moment, Pakistan are doing a good job of chasing it down. New Zealand did well in the end to get to over 150. Anderson played a, a lovely innings. On the bounce, couple of bounces to the field at long on. 
Pakistan doesn't need to play those uh, risky big shots. It's 70 of 53. They have nine wickets in, the, in hand. So all they have to do is to manage those singles, rotation of strike, and you'll get a four ball in every over because the pressure is immense on the bowling side. So all you've got to do is to not be silly. Just like that. Bowler will try something different. It's a wide down the leg side. So all you have to do is hold your nerve. Absolutely right, Remy's. Pakistan just got to take this game deep. They're well and truly in the driver's seat. Colin de Grunholm has done a pretty good job tonight with the ball. He's gone for 18 off 3.1 overs. But New Zealand need wickets and they need them fast. That's well collected by the keeper. That's his style of batting. Barbar Azam covers the set of stumps so that he can play the ball through the offside, the leg side. He opens both sides of the field. Full length dive and well stopped. He's good driving the ball down the ground, so that's the reason why he's been such a success in T20s. Doesn't get panic attacks, he just does it the simple way, the conventional way. Every now and then you see him hitting a big shot, but nothing out of the ordinary. Just keeps it simple. And that's all that needs to be done at the moment. It's just keeping it simple, rotating the strike, hitting the sweepers in the outfield, running hard, pick up the odd boundary, and Pakistan will coast home. Yeah, terrific track record. Look at the scores that he's produced in T20. Never a single there. New Zealand just need a couple of tight overs here, chucking a wicket or two as well. It could get them back in this game. Run rates required is still above eight runs and over. So if they can keep pushing that north, add a couple of wickets in, you just never know. Three failures in 11 innings. After 12.88 for one. Pakistan haven't lost a game under Safraz uh, as a chasing unit. 66 of 48, nine wickets in hand. They've got to be favourites to win this and win the series. Tim Saudi is on again. James, New Zealand needing a wicket, and this could be the guy for New Zealand. Kane Williamson going back to his premier pace bowler, Tim Saudi. He'll feel as though he needs to get a breakthrough, he needs to get this wicket if New Zealand are going to get back in this game. So he's turned to his most experienced bowler. From Saudi. A tremendous amount of experience now in international cricket. And Lindsay will be hoping that Tim can provide the breakthrough muchly needed for New Zealand. Starts with a slow off cutter and it works straight away. There's only one over where he Try to bowl seam up and was pinned and penalized. And so after that experiment that didn't work, he's back trying to bowl the slow ones with uh, good success. Economy 5.54. He's developed a couple of good slow balls now. He's got that leg cutter that we just saw, and he is 
Usual delivery is a slow ball for uh, an off cutter for the slow ball. New Zealand will uh, wait patiently. They probably sit in, not worry about maybe rolling over Pakistan yet. Getting them into a corner where that required rate goes to nine. It's 8.48. Just keep it nice and tight. You still feel from a New Zealand point of view, still trying to take wickets though. That's gone up in the air and it's a solid connection for six. Picked up the slow ball and put it away over mid-wicket. A wonderful shot from Asavali. He's known for his boundary hitting. He hasn't hit too many tonight. But he got that one out of the screws. There's their lead cutter from Tim Southey. Now Ali climbs all over there, over deep mid-wicket. Short boundary that side on his leg side. And comfortably clears the rope. Well, immediately after hitting the six, he was uh, he's struggling. He's a little down and out and stretching his calf muscle. I don't know whether it's a cramp or not, but this was beautifully handled by him. The slow ball picked up early and over mid-wicket and just hopping a little bit straight away. Maybe a bit of cramp. It's hard work hitting sixes, Remy's. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> A lot of water, a bit of stretching. The Australians use pickle juice for cramps, which is a, which is a first for us. Pickle juice, yes, you heard it right, James. Pickle juice, that's the first I've ever heard of that. I've heard of salt water, electrolytes, obviously, to try and stop the cramps, but pickle juice, I've never heard of that, Ramesh. Maybe because they were in a bit of a pickle all the time. <laughs> you teed that up beautifully. <laughs> he looked all right when he was executing that big shot six. And then he wins just a little bit after hitting that big shot. Good shot. He's a big striker of the ball. Very good with the with the long handle. Yeah, the right hander's leg side is the shorter side of the ground here in Dubai. It's definitely the side of the ground that they'll be targeting to try and hit boundaries. That's why Tim Southey's going with the leg cutter, trying to get the ball to grip on the surface away from the right hander towards the longer side of the ground. Gone for the appeal. It's a big appeal. The Pinch a leg by. Will they go for a review? They've got one review. They've been, I think, clocked out. Just sense as well with Asif Ali. Now that Pakistan have got into the situation, he can just free himself up a little bit, target that short leg side, and put some pressure back onto the New Zealand bowlers and trying to target some boundaries and try and run this score down as quick as they can <laughs> 48 more runs for Barbara Azam to get to 1000 t20 runs to be the fastest to get there hit him high on the back thigh see the keeper there just slightly going towards the leg side so that could have been one reason why New Zealand didn't go for a review a little bit of doubt 9.52 runs now for Babur. Up in the air and gone at mid-off. It's Ferguson, the substitute, who does a tidy job of it, and so he leaves. Babur tied up just a little bit, maybe tiring a little as well. 40 or 41, but he's a crucial wicket, and it's a massive blow. Huge wicket for New Zealand. This is why Tim Southey was brought back into the attack by Kane Williamson. He's got the huge breakthrough of Baba Azam. Relatively straightforward catch. And mid-off for Lockie Ferguson. 
Zahm is a substitute fielder. Abrazam has continued his form. He's got 40. Pakistan, 96 for two. Mohamed Hafiz, 38 years of age and uh, of late is, is in good form. Very good striker. Believes in resting the initiative from the opposition, so he'll get cracking straight away, I'm sure. Yeah, a big couple of overs coming up for New Zealand. If they can just squeeze this new partnership, squeeze Mohamed Hafiz a little bit, and it just might bring them back into the game. No doubt they've just got a huge wicket and Colin Munro back into the attack. That's good thinking. No pace on the ball, off cutters, leg cutters. Let them hit the ball hard just like this. So there's no timing because it was a slow ball. And went straight to Ferguson, the substitute fielder, making no mistake. That's good bowling. Excellent start from Colin Munro. He's taking all the pace off the ball. Tavali likes to pace on, likes to hit boundaries. Took a lot of risk to take a single. Looking at the big screen, at the big scoreboard. The Fraz talking to himself, I think. <laughs> Still a doable run. Required rate has just gone a little up. 8.77. 57 of 39 is the equation. Excellent over so far. Just a single of the four balls. And the thing with Colin Munro as well is that he gets through his overs quickly. So if they can get through this over and the next quickly, all of a sudden, Pakistan have only got five overs to bat. Just hustle it. Try and keep that run rate going up from a New Zealand perspective. Maybe chip another wicket. All of a sudden, they're well and truly back in the game. Yeah, it's gone over nine now. Down the ground for another single. Munro has done well. That's three runs in that over. 99 for two. That wicket from New Zealand. And over a so go from Tim Southey. Just brought the Pakistan worm back towards New Zealand's. Very much needed wicket. From a New Zealand perspective, Tim Southey came on, got the wicket. Now he's off again, and East Sodi is back for New Zealand. Yeah, the scoring rate uh, dipping just a little bit. It's gone over 9, 9.17. Wickets in hand. And Pakistan's recent track record as a chasing side is, is a decent one. Doesn't find the gap, so frustration is building up. Pressure is building up here on this pair, especially Asif Ali. He's 28 from 27.
Oh, almost hit his partner with that uh, big drive. 100 comes up for Pakistan. Such an interesting part of this game now that New Zealand got that breakthrough of Baba Azam. He was the one that was going to be the backbone for Pakistan that through the innings as he's done so well recently. But unfortunately, a little bit of a brain explosion from Baba Azam has just opened the door ajar for New Zealand. Right over the last over from Colin Munro. Can each Sodi do the same here? He doesn't try that shot a lot. Hafiz eventually gets to the other end. Didn't look a natural, Hafiz. <laughs> a little bit of innovation here from Muhammad Hafiz. I'm not sure he's done that an awful lot. Got away with it. It's not been given as a wide. And all of a sudden, this run rate's up to 10. In the space of an over and a half, the squeeze from the New Zealand team has got that run rate right up there now. Up, up around 10 runs and over. Doesn't get it entirely, but the ball somehow doesn't reach the fielder who's patrolling the deep fence, the cover fence. Hold it wisely. Flighted it and bowled it wider of the stumps. It's just amazing what pressure does. Two overs ago, Pakistan were cruising this. New Zealand get a wicket, a couple of tight overs. And now all of a sudden, the pressure well and truly back on Pakistan. At least a couple. after 15 Pakistan 104 for the loss of two required rate is now exactly 10. On teens. They're the home side. Only two down. Solomon Rowe. Well, he's uh, just had the single over. So Williamson's gone back to him. Some more pace off the ball, as it were. In terms of strategy. Here's the old professor. How many feeds? 38 years young and uh, changing the batting when he's at four. Is that is it enough? Oh, another one that just dropped short. Bobby Biggest Bobby side Bobby. of the ground here, as we've mentioned, Waka, here tonight. Yeah, that mid wicket area is, is a lot bigger than the offside. So if you need to hit that, it has to be really a big shot to get a big one. Oh, not really getting his timing right. He's been out there for 32 deliveries. Uh, Asif Ali is uh, going runnable since last boundary is in three overs. You know, Pakistan have not hit the boundary, so the pressure is slowly building. They they don't want to lose any more wicket here. Because on this surface, if you lose wicket at any time, it, it becomes harder for a new batsman to come in to just uh, start moving the game quickly. 46 required of 26 balls. And he decides to turn this into Fat City. Oh, don't worry about Dubai. Hello and goodbye. Oh. Well, when Asif hit. It goes big. 
wonderful use of the feet, slow delivery, picked it very nicely. And uh, he loves that area, that mid-on area, mid-wicket area. Wonderful hit. 92 meters. Well, he's renowned at uh, maximum hitting. Asif Ali, three in a row, of course, in PSL, the final, earlier this year. Ah! Oh, hello, hello, ah! yeah! Should have smashed this maybe over mid-wicket for six more. Missed out on a lowish full toss. Munro is there a little twist in the finish of this game? I'm sure there is. Going around the wicket, Munro, on that occasion, and uh, pulled nice and straight and full. And uh, Hassan Ali wanted to hit another six, hit him on the back leg, Asif Ali. And uh, missed it completely, hitting the middle stump, I would say. Can this wicket make a difference? 10 and over still required. Asif Ali gone for 38, it's 114 for three Pakistan. Vastly experienced, Shah Malik. Over 100 T20 internationals. Only player I've just been enlightened to uh, play over 100 for his country. What a time to come in. Need all that uh, calmness, cool-headed. Shah Ibn with uh, another very experienced campaigner, Muhammad Afiz. He's only just got in himself. That sounded pretty sweet! Oh, yes! There's another six of note! Well, Hafiz is not going to hold back. He's a changed man. He's a changed batsman. In the last couple of months, he doesn't hold back. He likes to go big. And that's a massive hit. That's the way to go. Yep, yep, yep. And starting over like this. And so much control as a batting side. Maximum in particular, even little in a boundary. So suddenly the over is uh, off to a flying start. Eight off two. And at asking rate, now it becomes so much more easy. 32 from 22 here. I think what they need to do now is just to milk another single, a couple of singles, and maybe hit, hit a couple and just be there. Don't lose a wicket here, Pakistan. Proud amping more. And they want more. And so does Hafez. If you please. Oh. Wow, that's a flat hit. I'm loving it. Quick delivery. He was nowhere near the pitch of the ball. Great with the stroke. Good balance, great balance. In the middle of the bat, timing was superb. Friday night party here. Crowd that much more into it. Oh, just shy. Phillips. Keeper, of course, most of the time. Good effort. Well, Hafiz wants to finish this game quickly. Was never carrying that one. Did well to keep his body behind and stop the boundary. He's playing a great hand, Mohammed Hafiz. Yeah, just a moment ago, he's on six. 
from six, and now suddenly he's striking at 210. Talk about greedy. And good thing I think now he's off strike, so then the show it his first one. bit of communication issues <laughs> you can laugh about it now no damage done well if Pakistan wins this game that'll be a massive achievement winning the 11 series in a row that's under surprise It's been a uh, good over for Pakistan. 17 from it. 1-3-1 one, one for three. Yeah, Mundo coming around the wicket and uh, bowling nice and straight. Asif wanted to go big. Missed it completely. Zealand and they posted 153 for seven after Kane Williamson won the toss. The 44s there. So Munro really needed a kick on and he couldn't again. Got that 58 the other night. Really needed to get sort of 70 odd plus. Would have uh, made things a little different to be. And now Pakistan but uh, Asif Ali with that uh, useful ends of 38 from 34 and he's Hafiz just uh, flicked the switch and now he's 22 from 11 and in a hurry up against uh, Ish Saudi but here's Colin Munro now he's a little bit of cheek didn't quite come off but uh, yeah, 22 now off the 17 well, with the wickets in hand, it should not be a problem for Pakistan to get over line. Run rate uh, from 10 and over suddenly comes down to 7.76. And two most experienced batsmen at the crease. We'll be watchful there. It's uh, a little more deceptive than you think, Munro. Confident now because he's picked up the wicket of uh, Asif Ali. And that one just sliding in. Change the angle, change the pace. Keeper standing up as well. Guess what? There, yeah, that's what. It's gone all the way. This time, Malik for six. Well, Pakistan dealing in sixes. This time around is Shreve Malik. Slow delivery, but too full. In the zone for Shreve Malik. What a hit. Yeah, you're right, Wak. It was that length, wasn't it? Held it right back, but it was in the slot. That take one. Give it back to Muhammad Afiz. Uh, cruise mode now. Pakistan. Coach will be happy. Not that you'd know by that picture. All very cruisy for the 11th successive series win. Take your time. Finish the job. Just a couple of senior pros. Crowd have seen some good entertainment, good catches, a couple not so good. And I've seen a bit of Hafiz. We've had 18 overs in this contest. Second innings, it's 140 for three.
Pakistan wins this game tonight, it'll be the 11th win in, of the series continuously. Consecutive wins. And also Pakistan chasing, they have uh, not lost a game under Sarfraz. Eh? The, the, 20, the T20 team is in right mode. They're cruising at the moment. Going rather swimmingly for the green machine. Ten series on the track. Look at that. Wow. This will be the 11th, and it's not far away. Just 14 from uh, a dozen deliveries. And under Safraz's guidance, his captaincy, 10 never lost chasing. Extraordinary. Bit of Tim Southey. Oh, here's a direct hit. I don't think they'll go upstairs. They don't need to. Another one to the total. Knocking it off. Well, Pakistan would love to finish the game in this over. They don't want to take the game into the last over. Anything can happen in last over. So, wickets in hand, take a risk in this over. Malik uh, comfortably home. Isabel start to rise. Crowd getting into it. Oh, hang on, hang on. He's going to give it wide, and Tim Southey's got every right. Shows up Raza. Hmm. Interesting one. Yeah, tight one. It might be just outside the line. I have a feeling. It's Yeah, just nip back a little bit, but still outside that blue line. The guideline for the umpire to call it wide. That's why he pulled out Trey Malik. He knew that the ball was outside that line. Smartly played by Trey Malik. Yeah, and I think the bowler just thought, well, he came across a little bit, so give me a bit of latitude, Ump. And he's going to go, oh, no, look at Tim Southey. He'll be ripping his hair out. <laughs> And Shazov says, I'm sorry, it's just too wide. Yeah, it's still that wide, I would say. Just maybe a couple of centimetres. Just depending which uh, green eye patch or a black eye patch you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to the green one, you go black. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Even with an eye patch on. <laughs> Couple of wides, couple of singles. And it's uh, 10 from 10. Interesting to see where uh, Hafiz goes with this now. Saying Waka okay, wants to finish it if they can. Could they? In this uh, penultimate over, in the chase, in the 19th. 10 from 10, but can they uh, clip a couple? Got the boundaries here. Quite nice for the home side. Crowd would love it anyway. Oh, it sounded good. There was protection. Milne gets in the way. Yeah, just gone 11 p.m. local time here. But, uh, been a good crowd. Plenty of atmosphere and enthusiasm from the fans. Change of pace. Change of approach, too, from Shah Malik. And it's back over to you, Hafiz. Once again, Pakistan very clinical throughout this game. 
maybe if you want to be really critical you can talk about pakistan's fielding or catching maybe a run outs they were a little lazy but overall when it comes to batting i thought they were outstanding once again with the ball in hand chain shah freedy i thought he was just too good for the new zealanders the wider one this time uh, skipper and Williamson so taking it down to the last over here. So there's a dot ball. So we've got one to go, eight needed. I'll tell you what, this would be interesting if it was a wicket or a dot ball, but particularly if Saudi could pick up a wicket here. Yeah, to make it hard for Pakistan, they, they need to get a wicket and, and, and to get a wicket of Hafiz because he's looking really good. Get Hafiz's wicket now and then going into the last over can cause Pakistan some headache. But they're both very experienced, you know. They they'll push it for single and they'll wait for the next over. Thinking about two, shouldn't because it allows uh, Hafiz to keep the strike. So 19 down. Yeah, talk about passion. Capital P, Pakistan. Yeah, take it easy. So we're down to the final over. Seven required. Well, six for a super over. Of course, uh, the old tie. You don't want to throw that one out the window, do you? Yeah. Hello, look at them all. I think they're just playing a delaying tactics. So they're just making the batsmen wait. Let them think a little bit more. Sometimes it works. But seven of six balls with Shri Malik and Hafiz at the crease, who, who batted very, very nicely throughout the series. I'll give it to Pakistan. I was expecting them not to take the game into the last over. But uh, now it has come down to last over. There's enough experience there to, to wrap it up. Well, you'd think so. Certainly uh, favourites. Here's Milne. Hit Yorker right. Oh, hit him. Oh! Had to be a direct hit. Oh. Yep, he knows it. The timber there. And it was that wicket they're looking for New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand need a little bit of luck also. It was quick and throwing. He hit it, throw it hard. It was well out. If he was gone, if that would have hit the the stumps, the luck is not in uh, in New Zealand's favour at the moment. Yeah, another one of those little key moments. Those things go your way. All of a sudden, the belief goes up. And boom! Down the throw to Phillips. There is the wicket. Get one, you get two, maybe. Waka Eunice. Well, that's the twist you were talking about, Danny. The split it straight into the hands of uh, De Gronholm, who's waiting for the delivery to come. Yeah, easy catch, no problem there. But can this wicket make a difference? Can they pick up another wicket? Can they get Hafiz's wicket? Where Malik gone for 10 is 148 for, for Pakistan.
Adam Mill. What's he got? Oh, he went Yorker again. Got to be one. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, the throw was awry. 150 is up here for the home side. Great running by the skipper, Sarfraz. He called it too as he hit it. The ball just stopped in the turf. It didn't come quickly to the wicket keeper. But two runs, a very crucial two runs. Three balls, four runs required. Now, from a New Zealand perspective here, desperation stakes. Need a wicket. Got the bonus. Second ball, the previous one of this final over. Oh, super striking! Mohamed Afriz, take a bow. Uppercut of delight. 11 series in a row for the Green Machine. Yeah, simply too good here for the Black Caps in Dubai, as they were in Abu Dhabi a couple of nights ago. All the experience comes into play. Just gave himself a little room and just hit it that, that through that cover region. to those